In this tutorial series, we create the office equipment purchase process. We start with simple process version, announcing only the form submission to related process members. Gradually, we introduce complexity with multiple rounds of approvals and communication between multiple stakeholders. First, select Create Process from the Admin menu and provide the name of your process. This name should best describe what the process does, as this name will be used by users to search for the type of the process they want to execute. Then, provide a short description of the process. This string is also used by users to search for the process and is visible in the list of processes. Next, specify the type of the process. When you save the process, it's automatically validated. In this case, we forgot to add at least one row which is capable of executing the process. Let's allow all the users execute this process. Next, we will add a new resource, which will be the purchase request form. Once we add it, we first have to save it so that it's saved in the database, and then we can proceed to edit the form. In the documentation field, you can leave further instructions for your users on how to fill the form and what are the possible constraints. Similar to process authorization, you have to authorize users to be able to visualize the form. Then we can save the form and access the form layout editor. We can access the editor in several different ways, either through the drop-down menu or clicking on the toolbar. First, we have to start by creating a form dataset. Dataset will contain the shape of the data. We can import shared data. This data will be pre-filled automatically on the form if user has previously entered this data into the system. At this moment, we import everything. Then we add two custom fields. One of them will allow user to describe the purchase order and the second one will be able to provide total requested amount. The total requested amount is a number, it's not a string, so we have to change the data type. Then we will validate the field so that user is not able to enter negative amounts or more than $200. Now we're ready to create the form. First, we need to decide the layout. For in this tutorial, we will create a simple grid layout with several rows and columns. We can add form elements in several different ways. We can search for the type of elements in the element field. We will add a header and name it Office Equipment Purchase Form. We can modify one or several properties of this form in order to satisfy our design needs. Now we will start adding the form fields. We have two different ways of how to add them. First, we can add them, dra dra dragging them directly from the dataset. This will automatically create a form field based on the type of the data. In this case, for string fields, it will add an input field. We can change labels in order to better reflect the type of the data we're editing. We can decide to make labels inline. That means that the label is rendered next to the field, not above the field. We can drag and drop fields inside the grid, to move them to the desired positions. In this case, we want to add a new header with label personal details. We can also add simple layout properties such as markings or paddings. We keep adding other fields into our form. While creating the form field directly from the data set often suffice, in this case, it's not satisfactory because we want to allow the user to specify a longer description, possibly a formatted description. In this case, the input field is not enough. That's why we can create either a text area, which provides you the possibility to create unformatted text, 
or we can create a rich text editor allowing the user to provide formatted text. We need to bind this control to a dataset field so that the control knows where to store the data. Now we need to add a total amount field. We see that we do not have enough rows in our grid. That's why we select the grid and we add a new row. We can now create the field just as previously using directly the drag and drop from the dataset field. We can add some specific formatting and a label. We also want to make a total requested field and a purchase request description required fields. Next, we need to specify who can sign the form and where is the signature stored. That's why we select the form and we add a new signature. We provide a signature label and a place where we store the signature value. We can also decide whether we allow the user to leave the comments while signing or whether we allow the user to reject the sign. We can also decide to apply company styles, such as in this case, applying the Western Sydney University style to the form. We are ready to modify the process. The process editor allows you to visualize the automatically generated textual description of the process, which also serves as a validation of the process. Let's create a new task. And let's lay it out as an activity diagram, in this case with a top bottom layout. We see that we need to specify the type of the task. In this case, we will create a user task. Now we see that the player is missing. That means that process doesn't know who can execute this task. We will specify the player to be the process owner. That means only the user who created this process can execute this task. Next, we need to add the resource that the user operates during this task, which is our purchase request form. We provide that the user needs to sign this form and where the signature is stored. Next, we add the finished process state. What we also want to do is we want to notify a specific role that the user has submitted a purchase request. In this case, it's going to be the business officer. What we want to tell the business officer is send him the copy of the purchase request form in a custom email. We see that the process is currently in a draft phase. We can double check the information on the process, seeing who created the process, when it was created or updated, and who owns the process. We see that the process is currently draft version one. What we need to do for users to be able to access this process is to publish it. We provide a short description of changes and we publish the process. From this moment on, the users can access and participate in the process. We can see that the label has changed to published. We can now launch the process from the process list page. We can see the description that we provided and the name of the process. Let's click on start process. The process instance screen contains a lot of data. First, you can directly access the form which you need to modify. You can visualize the list of participants, previous and current. You can visualize the activity log, so which tasks have been executed during the process or you can leave a comment to process participants. Let's click on complete purchase request form. This opens the form with a lot of data already pre-filled for us. Let's add a description of the items we want to purchase. Next, we click on sign to sign the document, but we see that the validation has failed since we request a higher amount that In order to sign the form, we need to provide the user password. When the form is signed, the process has finished. We can visualize the resources that have been created during this process. We can also see the activity log of all the tasks that have been performed during the task. 
Let's see the emails that have been sent during this process. This is the notification email that the user received that he needs to create the form. This is the notification that we decided to send to the business officer with the form that the user has filled. And then this is the last notification that the user received in the email about the successful completion of the process. Thank you for watching and I hope you will enjoy Orpix.